Hey dudes, welcome back to another Dragon Ball video. So check it out, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta clear some things up before we even get started. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about Dragon Ball The Breakers, first impressions of it from what I've seen and watched. However, comma, your man here didn't get invited to the beta, so I don't have any of my own gameplay to share, and as a result, we're gonna be watching some Dragon Ball Fighters. With that said, I did watch a lot of this content, and for those of you guys who are new to my content, I have thousands of hours in Dead by Daylight with thousands of hours in Evolve, and I've drawn a couple of parallels that I think you guys might be interested in. All right, so for first impressions, this game looks Looks like a lot of fun. I I'll be honest, it doesn't look all that pretty, but it doesn't have to. Like, as somebody who's really a massive fan of Dead by Daylight, that game <laughs> looks bad, and I still love it, you know? I so if I'm not gonna judge Dead by Daylight on visuals, then I can't judge this game on its visuals either. Although some of the animations do look a little goofy. And keep in mind, this is not a fully priced game. So in this game, you have a pretty wide, expansive map, with lots of verticality to it as well, making the Saiyan pod and the grappling hook really great for traversal, almost actually essential. Luckily, these things are a reusable resource as they go on a cooldown for you to go ahead and use later. These are also really great escape mechanics, so if you have, like, let's say, Cell right on top of you, and, you know, you and your teammates are going at it, but you know if something's about to go south, you can go ahead and call in your Saiyan pod, that way you can bail out of the situation in a couple of seconds after you're done fighting. I thought this was a really good approach to the game, since there really isn't all that much of a means of kind of wasting the killer's time. You see, in a game like Dead by Daylight, it's a really big objective of the survivors in order to go ahead and waste the time of the killer. You can do this by using what's referred to as a loop. Essentially, a structure you can play Ring Around the Rosies with and mind game the killer so like that you once again waste their time. Dragon Ball doesn't have anything like this, so having that escape mechanic forces Cell to go ahead and hunt you down all over again. Now, as you're playing as a survivor, you have seven people against Cell. If you're well organized, you can fight back pretty reliably, using your D-change ability in order to go ahead and mollywop the heck out of Cell and do a pretty good number. However, Cell is very, very strong, as he should be. You gotta understand, when it comes to asymmetrical games, the person who's playing solo who's playing alone needs to be stronger or just as strong as the entirety of the survivor group. This means one-on-one -on -one encounters with the killer are usually going to result in you getting your cheeks clapped. So if Cell is as strong as or stronger than all seven survivors combined, then what benefit do the survivors get for that balance? Well, the balance on the survivor side with any asymmetrical multiplayer game is the fact that your mistakes as an individual count seven times less than the mistakes of Cell. If Cell makes a mistake, that mistake affects 100% of his team because, I mean, he's the only person on his team. But if you make a mistake, it may not affect the entire team in most cases. Well, sure, yeah, in some cases it might, but in most cases it's not going to. Now, another way that Cell can actually gain meter to evolve is by absorbing civilians. These are little NPCs that cower around the map, and you can go ahead and save them as a survivor, and it's gonna be something that's really beneficial to your team to do so because you want to deny Cell as much meter as possible, keeping him from growing stronger. This forces Cell into a position where he's forced to confront the survivors himself if he wants to gain meter to evolve. This puts the playing cards a little bit more in your favor. And while Cell definitely is stronger than any individual survivor, as a team, you can help in order to fight him off. Now, what I found interesting about this game is a comparison I made to Evolve. In high-ranked Evolve play, you are almost forced in order to attack the surviving group, the Hunters, in order to gain meter to evolve. The only difference here is in Evolve, when your health got low, you were able to abandon the fight in order to go ahead and gain more armor. But in Dragon Ball The Breakers, there doesn't really seem to be any incentive for Cell to leave the fight, and I think that's something that's important for a game like this. In Dead by Daylight, this incentive for the killer is if they're wasting too much time on a single survivor. If a survivor's really doing a good job of wasting the killer's time, it's beneficial for the killer to drop the chase entirely and go bother somebody else, making better use of his time. In Dragon Ball The Breakers, I didn't really see any incentive for Cell to leave any fight he got into, and he was so much stronger than any of the survivors that he never really got close to death anyway, once again, resulting in him not having any incentive to just not clap cheeks. I didn't really notice anything like that, but if you guys have played it, let me know what you think about that. The seeming lack of incentive made me feel like it made it really difficult for the survivors to get their objectives done. While it was still certainly possible, I feel like a little bit of tweaking might be able to be done in that area. This is only the beta, so like, things are still subject to change and none of us really are professionals at the game, right? None of us really have like high tier strategies here, so it's possible that we are just missing some key strategies we could be implementing. Now, one of the strategies I saw used pretty often is the raider would actually camp somebody's body, making sure that nobody could revive them. In Dead by Daylight, a similar thing happens, and when this happens, the best strategy is to knock out the objective while the killer is occupied at the body. Now, obviously, it definitely sucks for the person who's getting camped. There's no doubt about that, but this buys the rest of your team time to actually escape. And actually, on that note, we can talk a little bit about balance here. So far, a lot of people are saying that the game is pretty imbalanced, favoring more so the killer. And while this definitely might be true, when you have an asymmetrical game whose focus 
focuses to actually escape the trial, a balanced game would see half of the survivors die. In Dead by Daylight, this means that two survivors should escape during any given trial if the game was perfectly balanced. So for Dragon Ball The Breakers, roughly three or four people should survive each game if the game was perfectly balanced. Obviously, you'll have games where everybody escapes, and surely you'll have games where everybody dies, no doubt, but that's typically how the cookie crumbles for asymmetrical games. But dudes, let me know what you guys think about Dragon Ball The Breakers, especially if you played it. I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Are you excited for the game? After seeing people play the beta, I'm a little bit more hopeful for the game. It looks like a lot of fun. But let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a massive like, and if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to stay up to date with all things Dragon Ball. But on that note, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching.